So I spent a week in the desert recently. My first post-vaccine travel brought me to New Mexico, where a seminary pal of mine recently relocated. And when I landed in New Mexico, the first thing I noticed was the color scheme. New Mexico had me smitten for the color red. The airport had red details. The ground was not covered in green grass, but was speckled with dust and rocks and red. And when I got into my friend's car, we drove into the sunset and the whole sky was red. We put on wide open spaces by the chicks and after months of being in a hobbit hole at home, I felt like I could breathe again. And I wonder if that is a small feeling similar to what Noah and all of his animal companions felt like when they stepped off the ark. They saw new colors after seeing seas of blue and gray, rain, and finally there was a rainbow reds and yellows and greens and purples. There were landmarks on the horizon rather than wave after wave. Tim and I are going to be talking about Noah and the great flood for a few weeks because although this story is well known in our imagination, it's also very complex. And if there's anything in our text that relates to surviving and living during a global pandemic, wondering what comes next, it is the story of the great flood. And this morning, we are not quite at the rainbows and the colors quite yet. We are at the beginning. We are listening to what God had to say in the face of an impending disaster. And as Solomon read for us, we heard God speaking to Noah some directions. This is how you will build it. And God gives Noah the exact measurements for the ark. 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits high. God even says, when you're building the roof, leave an opening one cubit high and put the door on the side, not on the bottom, and make three decks, a lower, middle, and upper, not two. The directions that God gives Noah are straightforward and easy to understand. And if I'm honest, this week, I find myself a little jealous of Noah. A clear set of measurements, a blueprint from God is actually a little bit rare. And there have been days, perhaps for you as well, when I wished God would tell me what the exact measurements for my arc should be. But instead of clear measurements, sometimes our lives look a little bit more like unassembled Ikea furniture. I know this this piece of building can be beautiful and I have some directions, but I can't really understand them and I think I have all of the parts and how, God, am I going to put this together? In these moments of doubt and transitions, grasping for clear directions from God is often our go-to. But sometimes we cannot hear them as easily as Noah. But there are also moments when we step outside of our frustrations that we can see the compass that God has given us looks a little different than it does for Noah. 
When I was in New Mexico recently, we did a lot of hiking. And hiking in the desert was a lot different than hiking through the paths in Rock Creek Park or in Shenandoah. There's less of a marked trail from the lower density population. The dust doesn't hold footprints in the same way that dirt and mud do. But in walking in this completely foreign climate for me, there was something beautiful that led our path. Trail markers, piles of stones on top of each other called cairns. Perhaps some of you have hiked using cairns before, or perhaps while walking in more wooded areas, you have followed the colored markers on trees in a wooded setting. As a way to mark a path, cairns are often placed at junctions on the trail when the path or direction is not so obvious. They can also mark out a point of obscure danger or a noteworthy outlook, such as the summit of a mountain. When I was hiking in the desert with my big hat on and long sleeves, every time I saw a Karen, it was a moment of deep relief. Okay, we are on the right path. It was a reminder that people had been here before and I was moving in the right direction. And it may have been the heat or the recent lack of travel, but each time I saw a Karen, it felt like a little whisper from God. This is the way you should go. For Noah, God may have given the exact blueprint for the ark, but perhaps for us, God is a little bit more like a Karen on a dusty trail, reminding us the way to go. The voice of an old friend on the other end of a phone line after moving to a new city. That is a Karen of God singing a hymn that a family member loved in worship on the anniversary of their death. That is a trail marker of spirit with us. Stepping outside and seeing the sunflower you planted from a seed that has finally peeked its head out into the world, these are moments of affirmation where you can feel for just one second you are on the right path. There's a new children's book out by the late Rachel Held Evans, a beloved progressive author who died suddenly a few years ago called What Is God Like? Held Evans challenged old metaphors for God such as judge and timekeeper and instead introduces up to new images of God that are full of abundant imagination. Here are a few images from the book. Sit back and relax while I read you a few pages of these new metaphors. God is like an artist, creative and unpredictable always making and remaking everything brilliant and new. God is like a rainbow, vivid and full of color, a dazzling reminder of promise and hope for all people after the storm. God is like the wind, passionate and full of mystery, God is both here and miraculously over there. God is everywhere, swirling through the world, whistling through mountain ranges and rustling through trees and also pressing against your cheek on a breezy day. 
These are metaphors for God that open up our capacity to see the different ways God is present in our lives. And yes, there are moments when the path forward is obscured with dust and doubt. And there are times when the path to justice seems unattainable or that next career or life decision seems unsure. But then we must look for the ways that God is like a trail marker. And those Karens, those markers of life sometimes come in the whispers of community around us. In Scotland, it is traditional to carry a stone up from the bottom of the hill to place on a Karen at the top. In this tradition, the summits would have cairns that grew larger and larger. An old Scottish blessing comes from this ritual. I'll put a stone on your stone. Walking a journey is easier with companions. In New Mexico, my friend was quick to say, don't worry, we're almost at a shaded point. I remember this particular Karen the last time I hiked here. In church communities, we are here to support each other in navigation by sharing our own experiences on the trail. God shows us the trail when we help each other spot the trail markers ahead. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it. Living creatures will be able to breathe through a one cubit high opening on the roof. Put a door on the side of the ark. Make a lower, middle, and upper deck. God says this all to Noah, and Noah follows the command. Today, we say to each other, this is how we will build it. Stronger together. When you can't see the trail marker, I'll point it out for you. I'll put my stone on top of your stone. God is like a trail marker on a winding path guiding our way with grace and love. So may it be. Amen.